Good evening, Caroline from Bubbly Maths. Tonight we're doing five in a line, quick live to show how to prepare you for tomorrow, which there isn't much to prepare. It's just a game, just a game. It's a game. It's a game which is helpful to train you, children and grown-ups alike, in the skills that are required to do mathematics, to think mathematically, to think logically, to think uh, uh, strategically. And and it's and I've gone off on one again. <laughs> I'm just attempting to share it and it's, I don't know where it goes when I do that. I press something and it goes off somewhere completely, not to do with sharing. So, um, Yeah, sharing's not working, so I'm not gonna worry about that. What I am gonna do is have a look at see what you can see to make sure that you can see what you're supposed to see. So it's gomoku, which means five spots or dots in Japanese. And it's a game to work at all levels. So tomorrow morning, we're going to be talking about a little bit more about the usefulness of it in learning. So I'm just going to quick do one run for early years. There are different levels of early years. Early years you can play tic-tac-toe and keep playing tic-tac-toe. That's a game, it took me a while, quite a long while to work out how to actually win tic-tac-toe. And frankly, I don't remember how to win tic-tac-toe now. I can't, couldn't tell you, this is how you do it. I have to work it out each time. But it's a great game to keep playing. I enjoyed playing it throughout my, all of my primary years. I remember distinctly playing it into my secondary years. And for me, personally, I was well into my teens before I actually worked out how to win it consistently. Not, or not win it, how to not win, how to um, play it so that one person that ne nobody wins so that's a great game to be playing strategically and and um so if you don't know how to play tic-tac-toe you take it in turns one does an x one knots and crosses is another name for it another one does an x and if the knots doesn't spot that knots could go here and then crosses would win um it, it's, you talk about whether it's an advantage to start in the middle or just play the game and just play the game until they work out how to, to how, I guess to a point where no one wins. And um, I've just realized my microphone is over here. So you might have had a bit of difficulty hearing me. Ah. Look forward to the day when I've got a technician who can sort all this stuff out. Um, and, and then it's okay, well, that's okay, we're done with that because that become boring, so the next step up. And this step, actually, I'm going to just draw a small grid here to show a game that you, whoops, that's sort of really not a straight line. It's kind of hard to draw a straight line. Uh, it's wonky, but please understand, um, get the game, even if it's wonky shape. Grid, Woo! it's tilted. It's okay to have tilted squares, there's still squares. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, ish. <sighs> That's really not good. But the idea is that for early years, it's the um, just drawing a straight line so you can be making dots and you just be looking at the way I like, one way I like to play it with early years is aim for three. And you can actually, there's two there. Oh, why am I doing that one? We wouldn't do it there. No, might do it there. And then one might go there. And then, okay, one might go there. And then, I think, okay, I'm gonna stop that one there. Let's see if we're making three dots, how we're doing here. Three dots, put one there three dots and oh it's three dots hello I was thinking more see I've already I've already had positions where I could have done three dots in fact I've got three choices now one two and three 
three dots. So that's a nice, simple, it's an extension of knots and crosses and you can take it from there and move on to three dots. Okay, so that turns out to be easy. Go for four and then five and five is a really engaging game. And um, you just take it in turns to draw um, a different color dot. And there is a game, an actual game where you use black and white um, markers. And it is a very engaging game and it can be played at a very early age. One thing I like about this game, especially for early years, is to work out what a straight line is. It is not necessarily obvious for an early years learner to actually know what a straight line is. So let's move that back here a bit. And then this is the other game. This game can be played two different ways. It can be played with where you place five markers so you would want to have this as markers two it was nice to have the, the one in the middle uh three four each one of you has five markers five oh I probably should have gone somewhere else but anyway three each uh got that one got that one I'm gonna go there one, two, three, four each. This one's gonna go there. I haven't played this very much. I'm, I'm, it's probably a better, one, two, three, four, probably a better strategy than this. But now I'm going to go looking for five in a row. So one, two, three, four, five. You can go any of the verticals, any of the horizontals, and then you've got two diagonals. And you can move along any of these lines. So we're missing one. Blue is now going to go. Where it's going to be a good position because you want to do two. I'm going to blue is going to go here. And now from here on in, you have to move the markers. So the game is over. You can actually play it so that you continue to place. So you can play that with a pen or, or different size caps or dots. Um, or you can now we can play if you actually have a physical thing on a on a board that you've drawn out. You now move the marker and you have to move every time you cannot not move. And the objective is keep moving around until one of you makes five in a row, five in a line. So that's a really nice game as well. So all of these are variations which work. Um, with your logical thinking, with your mathematical thinking, with your um, risk taking, with your strategy, all these things are important life skills and skills you need in the maths classroom. So that's, so that's what we're going to be talking about tomorrow morning. We're going to be going um, wait, just a, into a little bit more detail pretty much a summary of what I've just said and then we're going to play the game one last time and we're going to um, really talk a bit, little bit more in depth about how playing these games is so important and it's, it's enjoyable, you can have family time, play it in, in after, after your meal every evening, play it in the classroom, have it as a starter, have it as a game you can play when you've completed a task if you've got especially the, the, the high achievers or ones that if they just become disengaged, fine, come play a strategy game. You're disengaged with the, the, today's activity. Don't sweat it, don't, don't get frustrated. Come play a strategy game that's going to stretch your mind, going to stretch your thinking and going to enhance your ability to do mathematics. Or if, if worst case, it'll enhance your ability to think logically. So that's what we're going to talk about tomorrow. And I'm just going to see if anyone has actually joined us. Never did succeed in doing the Facebook Live. So let me just see if anyone, I did the live, but obviously because you're looking at it, but I haven't, don't know if someone's joined. I didn't succeed in doing the share in the, we have had a couple of viewers. And unfortunately, I can't see if they've left a comment yet. So if you have left a comment, I'll check later. and and comment back if you have. Thank you very much for joining us. See you in the morning. That's nine o'clock in the morning. I will actually be, this one I'm talking to grown-ups. Tomorrow morning I'll be talking to learners. 
So I'm going to review the, the three games that were appropriate for bang seven to um, 18 year olds and then at 10 o'clock I'll be talking to early years learners and we'll play some games so come ready with paper and pens and if you want to play this game set up the grid I have put the the, re the activity in the description so please do download that it just gives you the grid and it gives you the layout for this game as well so if you've got some dots or some I've got these things to do on the on the board I've got was I was using and I'll be using these in the morning I've got fridge magnets just letter fridge magnets that I can use on here but if you're using if you're on horizontal on a table you don't need fridge magnets if you're enjoying these lives please do share them and please do talk about them on your Facebook um, profile tell other people about them let encourage them to join the group if you find it's useful and also if you're on YouTube, please do subscribe to our YouTube channels. We have two. One is the Maths Toys YouTube channel, which is where every resource, we're, these are resources that are created by AIMSEC and it's, it's on the Aiming High website. And they're resources that we've started to create, not me, my colleagues have started to create um, family learning, home learning, and inclusion guides. So those ones are designed specially for you and I've got the link to that in the description and then on that in the YouTube channel it's the Maths Toys YouTube channel we're in the process of creating and we'll eventually have one video for every home learning and inclusion guide and the Bubbly Maths YouTube channel where we have all these lives have been uploaded and also we're starting to work with um, with publish videos to help with maths anxiety and generally how to enhance home learning of mathematics. Thank you for joining us and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.